exalt and give him the glory for the marriage of the lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. His bride, you and I, has made herself ready. Didn't say God was going to do it all, did it? It said his bride makes herself ready. Those of you who came up today, those of you who opened your heart to receive what God was uh, wanting to impart to you, that's part of how you make yourself ready. You present yourself to the Lord, and the Lord helps that transformation process. But we have a part. If we decide to sit with a closed heart, God can't really move in our life. We get a little bit on, you know, sprinkles, uh, like the water that all of a sudden I went, oh, what is that? Oh, water. My husband's throwing water. I should be used to that. You've done that for years, but I didn't expect it this morning. And, and so the bride makes herself ready. We open our heart. We open our life to what the Lord is doing. And that's how we become the bride that the word says without spot or wrinkle. If Aisha walked in here yesterday and her dress was all wrinkled and it was all dirty, what would we have done? We would have gone, oh, that's such a pretty dress, but what happened? Why does it look that way, right? You would not expect a bride to walk in with a dress that's all wrinkled and dirty, correct? So our job is to make ourselves ready so that we will present ourselves without spot or wrinkle. Does it mean perfection? No, it means glorification. It means that we've given our life to God and he has poured into us and through us and that oozes out of us and automatically creates this wonderful image of Jesus because we're transparent. Our heart is his heart. See, when you want the Lord, your life automatically reflects that. It isn't like I go to church and I, I hope I look like Jesus, but then when I go out there, I don't look like Jesus. It's all the time, everywhere. Everywhere you go, it's who you are. Barbara, good to see you. We've been praying you through, Barbara. Up and down, are you? Oh, we're so glad to have you here. Do you remember the life support cards we had last week and we said we had a prayer chain going for someone who was in the hospital? Good report, not good report, good report, roller coaster. That's her and she's here today and we're so thankful. Amen. It was granted to her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure. For the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. You are clothed in bright linen. You get brighter when you do the righteous deeds. What is righteous? Those things in congruency and harmony with what God is saying. We don't do things that are out of that alignment. Alignment is a process. It doesn't happen all at once. How many of you have had braces? Aren't you thankful it didn't happen in one night? Because to, over two years it hurt. Never mind if your teeth moved in a day what it would feel like. Well, they couldn't. They would snap off. Right? God knows what we need when we need it. He knows the seasons to bring that tweaking into our life to transform us into the image of Christ. And so here it says, as we do righteous deeds, we as saints, we look more and more like Jesus with bright linens. God bless you. This comes from Ephesians chapter 5. Husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. That's you, the bride. Having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor. Here it is again, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. Holy simply means set apart. That you are set apart. That there's something different about you. That Christ has drawn you as his own, and he is making you his bride. And you present yourself to him. And there's a great anticipation for that. So that is part of what's happening in this season. I put a word uh, from someone who I think is a great uh, minister of the Lord. Her name is Cindy McGill. In, and this is a word about what God is doing today for the saints of God and the vision of what our life should be. So if you are wondering, God, you know, I just I, I, I want to see my life like you see me. This particular word uh, is talking about the methods, new methods and mandates in this millennial generation and what we're seeing in the body of Christ as God does this transformation process. Amen. Anything else? I think right now I'm good until I do announcements. Thank you.
Oh, you want me to repeat that? Pastor, prophet, amazing man of God, supernatural father. For anybody that missed that. Say this after me, edify, 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 and edify a little bit more. And then again, edify. Who knows the meaning of edify? Build up. If you want to know anything about praying in tongues, one of the reasons that you hear me do it, and one of the reasons God will use that in your life is because it says in Jude that it will build you up. So if you don't have that tool, ask Bill Garvey for it, and he'll give it to you. <laughs> gotcha. Come up to the prayer team afterwards. If you want another supernatural tool, so you can actually deliver yourself. You can actually strengthen yourself when you're down. <clears throat> you can just start praying. <laughs> you go from weak to strong. You go from poor to rich in spirit. You go from confusion to clarity. Does that sound good to any of you? I'm not feeling the excitement. Am I hitting walls of disbelief? What am I hitting right now? I think the keyboard's just a little bit loud. Thanks. <laughs> You're doing a great job, though. It's a great, 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 powerful keystroke for what is in the atmosphere today. Somebody told me that T.D. Jakes does not speak in tongues when he preaches. I found out the other day that's not true. Because he does. He holds nothing back. And that's what you're called to be. People that don't hold what's inside of you back. You don't hold the love back. You don't hold generosity back. You don't hold goodness back. You don't hold kindness back. You don't hold forgiveness back. You don't hold prayer back. You don't hold encouragement back. You pull the gold out of people. You see the gold in someone and you focus on that. You're not distracted by their behavior because all you see is the God gold that God sees inside. You see Luann and you see amazing, awesome, tremendous, outstanding, stunning, fantastic, glorious. Bam! When your kids are jumping off the chairs that you told them not to jump off of and the couches that you told them not to bunk. Bounce off. All you see is amazing, tremendous, outstanding, obedient, excellent children. We were in a Wednesday night class and somebody says, what are you talking about? How do you, I said something about use edifying correction. And the person said, what's edifying correction? I almost drew a blank when I said that, but it squeaked it out. But I didn't feel I gave the person enough. That's what I'm talking about. Bring your kids up. Don't push them down. Focus on their identity. Focus on people's identity and pull them up into who they are, who God has made them to be. Don't get distracted by their behavior. Now I have 14 messages today. I am so fired up. I'm about to explode. So you're going to get all 14 today. Are you ready for 14? You've already got 13 and a half, so we only got another point five to go. Some of you felt relief. I don't know if that's good. <laughs> Casey's not even looking at me. That's really not good. You know what Casey's doing? You think she's texting somebody right now, but she's actually taking notes. See how I'm thinking positive right now? So even if it was a little corrective, it was greased with joy and humor. Amen? And she didn't run out of the building, so that's a good sign. <clears throat> okay, this is what I got for you. <clears throat> Imitations, no, yeah. Imitation irritations. That's what this portion is going to be on right now. Imitation irritations. You're going to love me after this message. You are so going to be blown away and going to go out 
of this place so excited. You're probably not going to sleep. You're probably going to go to bed tonight with so much joy, you're going to have a hard time sleeping. I'm just saying. I'm just warning you, so get ready. Because the joy level is going to go so skyrocket that it's going to blow your head off of your head. Now, see, I can tell what kind of personalities different people have. <laughs> Just by listening and watching you. I can tell those phlegmatic personalities that are... I'm not moving from this place until you prove to me what you're saying is true. And don't even think about me being excited until you prove it to me. Those are the kind of people you want on your team. Because once you're convinced, once they're convinced... They are the most loyal, faithful people you could ever want on your side. They're oxen. They're pillars. They're loyal. So if I just described you and you were thinking, oh, no. I say, oh, yes, I want you. I want to do the work to convince you that what I'm saying is true. I have no problem with hard work. So if you're one of those personalities, no problem. And I want the sanguines that are first to go, ha, hoo, ha! Yeah! I want you to have solid ground so your hairs are solid. And you got substance for the people that want some why to your wow. They want some why to your wow. People need some why to your wow. And I'm one of the wow guys, and so I have to slow down sometimes. So let me pretend I'm building a campfire for the next few minutes. How you build a campfire? Roll up a little paper, little twigs, a little bigger wood, and then you ignite it, and it goes woof. <clears throat> we had a wedding here yesterday, and my wife amazingly did amazing again, and she read... And reminded all of us out of the Amplified Version what 1 Corinthians 13 says. And in describing love, it says love is not irritable. What? What are you talking about? I love my husband, but why are you so irritated with him? It's actually pretty exciting because you get the answer immediately. You're just lacking love. The Lord <clears throat> wants, <clears throat> help me, Lord. I was getting ready. Clothes were falling off. Of course, you know my closet. My closet is perfect. It's totally organized. Everything's in place. I knew she would say something. That's her side. I'm getting, getting better. Someday I'll be like my wife. All this week, the Lord has taken me to a whole new level of soul sensitivity that I've never been at concerning irritations and a whole new mindset about irritations and how fantastic they are. Jordan, you're one of those people I'm going to have to work hard. Has anybody seen beautiful pearls around a woman's neck? Some of you know the story, but everybody needs to hear this again, and we need to be reminded of it probably three times a day. <clears throat> An oyster has a shell, a very hard shell, and when a piece of sand comes inside the oyster... It secretes lycra. Say lycra. It is the actual substance that the pearl is made out of, but it's a fluid until it's secreted around the grain of sand. Say grain of sand. I didn't say a gallon of sand. I didn't say a bucket of sand. I didn't say a cup of sand. I didn't say a spoonful of sand. I said grain of sand. How big is a grain of sand? 
Thank you. Microscopic is the best word. All of you did great, but microscopic is definitely, he, he nails it. A grain of sand is microscopic. When that microscopic, can you say that better than me, microscopic? Oh, all of you didn't join in because you weren't quite sure that you could say that word. Ah, yeah, so no making fun of me now. Microscopic piece of grain of sand comes into the oyster. The oyster gets irritated. Say irritated. Over a microscopic grain of sand, the oyster gets irritated. Are you kidding me? This is the truth. It irritates it. One grain of sand irritates the internal organs of the oyster. But the oyster was created with an ability by God, say God, to secrete a liquid that covers that grain of sand. And then the next grain of sand that comes in, it secretes the liquid again and covers the covering of the last grain of sand. And it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until you have a nice pearl to wear around your neck. That all came from irritations. What a beautiful, irritating necklace you have. Look at the quality that came out of all those irritations. And it's hanging on your neck. We're displaying irritations. Look at my nice irritation necklace. Did you love it? The Lord wants you to love irritations. <laughs> I was doing so good, Gabe. <laughs> Did you hear all that? Buddy, come up and help me. Show them what we've been working on during this house project. How far you've grown. Where you are not intimidated by... 10,000 more than they said bills anymore. <laughs> Rachel's holding up her pearl necklace. <laughs> Great prop person right there. This is really simple, and it's not long. <clears throat> the Bible says in James, count it all joy when you're irritated. Wait a minute, it doesn't say that. It says, count it all joy when you have trials and tribulations. Well, let me ask you a question. Let's, let's get really point blank. Let me get point blank here. Those trials and temptations, do they make you happy or do they irritate you? So my translation is perfectly fine. Count it all joy, do a little dance, sing a little song when you're irritated. More irritations, the more celebrations coming out of my mouth. Whoa, hey Bill. Why are you doing all that dancing? Because I'm celebrating. And Chrissy's going to know the code talk. Oh, there was a lot of irritations. He's trying to overcome the irritations. All this last week, last two weeks, I'm going through the house and I'm celebrating. And I'm declaring the word of the Lord. And my wife says, oh, I know what's going on. Because see, she already heard this message probably six times. She could probably preach this message maybe even better than me this morning. But she already had the microphone, so that was it. She's, she's, she's done. Boom. Benched. The Bible says, if you consider irritations a gift from God. Oh, I'm really stretching you now. If you, if you consider it joyful that you're being irritated right now, that these great things are going to happen. You're going to have this massive perseverance muscle. You're going to have... Christ-like character and you're going to live 24-7 hopeful. Why would you live 24-7 hopeful? Let me show you how this works. My wife, who never irritates me, just happens to do something that irritates me. It, you know, it's like once every five years. Lord, please forgive me. I confess my sin right now. <clears throat>
If you think irritations are bad, you're going to live sad and mad. If every time you're irritated about something, you think something bad's happening, you're going to live mad and sad, resentful. You're just, your blood pressure is going to go the wrong way. It's going to affect you physically. <clears throat> because see, in Proverbs, it says that the wisdom of God causes health and prosperity. That's what it says in the book of Proverbs. That the wisdom of God, the Word of God, using the Word of God causes, literally will affect you physically. So your thinking is so critical. That's why the Bible says, think upon these things that are praiseworthy, that are excellent, that are truth according to God's Word, not truth according to your circumstances. It says, meditate on what the Word of God is saying in the moment, in the Bible, what He's saying to you right now. He said to me, this morning, that I was talking about my closet. Thank you for reminding me, Holy Spirit. He said, the more problems you have, the more joyful you're supposed to be. <laughs> Maya laughed at me at the wedding yesterday. Not in a mocking way. But she just like, Pastor. <laughs> See, something went wrong. And I said, no problem. Just go, dripping, bop, boop. She says, oh, you're such an optimist. That's part of my calling, and that's your calling. If we're thinking according to the Holy Spirit, you will be trademarked, maybe even mocked. You will be labeled as an eternal optimist. If you are thinking according to what the Word of God says and what the Holy Spirit is saying in that moment, you will be an eternal optimist. Let me just give you a few scriptures here. No good thing will God withhold from you. Psalm 84, 11. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. Did I release grace and glory in this place today? That wasn't me. The Lord says, I will give grace and glory. Oh my God, I didn't even know I had a scripture to go with it. I was just doing what the Holy Spirit told me to do. The Lord will give uh, you grace and glory. No good thing. Say no good thing. Come on, let's get violent. Say no good thing. Will he withhold from those that walk uprightly? What that means, it just means in agreement with him. Just means that this is what the goal. How many have ever heard of a pilot that goes from New England to California without adjusting the, the, the what do you help me, Bill? I can't say steering wheel. I'm not a pilot. I'm sorry. They got to pay attention to their gauges because the crosswinds. And the side winds, the up winds, the lower winds are always pushing this airplane out of where it's supposed to go. So if that pilot isn't constantly bringing that thing into alignment, it left New England and had a destination, but it never met there because the pilot did not use the wisdom that he needed to use. So he never landed in Los Angeles. He landed down in Mexico and Acapulco. And then he blamed it on the winds when he had the power to do something about it. God wants to give you the power. He has given you the power. He wants you to use that power. We get off course when we're not thinking correctly. So the Lord in James says, hey guys, this is exciting. You have a problem. This is exciting. This is good news. Call up somebody and say, Jackie, ow! A problem just landed on my front porch. I am so excited. <laughs> I'm sitting on the edge of my seat waiting to see what God's going to do because I know that every problem mixed with faith will lead to another testimony and I'll know God in a way I didn't know him before. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I love irritations. I love problems. I'm going to so blow your mind and all the strongholds that are in it that are keeping you from abundant life on a daily basis. By changing one thought, one thought, <laughs> one thought between light and dark, between happy and sad, between strong and weak, between glad or mad. Mary, three people cut me off on the highway today. I am so excited. <laughs> 
I didn't realize how valuable I was and what a destiny I have that three people tried to kill me today. I am so excited. I just had to call up and tell you, Mary, I just want to let you know, I just want you to be prepared that when we have supper tonight, I'm going to be so excited. I don't know if I'm going to be able to eat. I'm getting you now. You made me work hard, but it's worth it. I'll sweat for you, Joe. Every problem. You are behaving over here. I just have to address and edify, edify, and edify the person over here. What the heck are you doing? <laughs> With great seriousness, but a whole lot of humor mixed in here this morning. The Lord wants to, oh my God, help me, Jesus. You will not even conceive the level of freedom, the level of joy, the level of peace that's waiting for you if you would just exercise what I shared with you. See, I'm paraphrasing a scripture. How many have seen a stone statue? A stone statue? They're, I mean, they're everywhere. Okay, how did that stone, beautiful, amazing architecture, how was it created? One irritation at a time. The stone didn't kick back. He get away from me, devil. It said, thank you, Jesus. I'm going to become Christ-like as I rejoice in the midst of all the problems and the irritations. The Bible says rejoice always. It never says, it never says, Christy, Psalm 92, 73 says that you don't have to rejoice. No! She cannot find that scripture in the Bible. Now, I'm not saying not be compassionate. I just gave you scripture out of Isaiah 30, 18 this morning. God's heart is to be compassionate and gracious. He's, we're like kids. He works with us. But he matures us into the whole thing that the word of the Lord and the preaching that you're hearing right now and the teaching you're hearing right now is to mature you because maturity is a place of freedom. Do you want that freedom? See, I, be you, I believe you do. So that's why I'm giving this. I believe God thinks of you and values that. You want that. Receiving instruction, receiving and correction matures us and maturity is a place of freedom. The Bible says it's not just a, a lark. It's not just a luck thing. It's, 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 <clears throat> the scripture says you can live above. You're not the head. You're not the tail. You're, you're the head, not the tail. You're above, not beneath. But only when you think according to how God wants you to think. You can pretend you're above all the time, but you're living in the cellar. And you can say, I'm above and not beneath. I'm above and not beneath. No, you aren't. You're trying to make something work that's not real for you. So you got to get a scripture and make it real to you. Okay, Lord, you said, you're, well, here, here's what the Lord is saying. One scripture, consider it joyful when you have problems. Because then amazing things are going to happen. You're going to grow in ways you've never grown before. Perseverance, character, and hope. You will live in full-time hopefulness if you embrace instead of resent this irritation. If you secrete praise and rejoicing and faith over this little grain of irritation, you will create pearl-like character that will be more valuable than anything else you, that you own. It will take you places that nothing else will take you. It will give you favor that nothing else will take you. Was that an amen? The beginning of an amen? He got the ah pot right. Ah. Uh, okay. What did you get out of the last 10, 
12, 13, whatever I've been on this particular subject. What do you, what's in your spirit? Do you think, do you think I've deposited enough in your spirit? Imitation, irritations. The irritations are designed to make you into an imitation of who Jesus is. They have purpose in your life. They're, they're, we're, now sometimes it's because the irritations are there because something's unhealed inside of us. Sometimes the irritation is some, because something's unhealed inside of the other person. But what the Lord wants you to have a mindset is, and He wants to break you, bring you to a whole new sensitivity. And this is going to work more in your families than anywhere else. The people that are closest to you on the job, closest to you in your house, that's where the enemy works the most. You know, it just bugs me the way she does that. It just fries me the way he does that. It just annoys me and frustrates me. You ever get that fang, that fang look? And you probably run away if you looked in the mirror right at that moment. Right at that moment when you think that that person is evil, you look in the mirror and you recognize, oh, I'm the evil one. And it'll scare it right out of you. Your love is, I mean, yeah, your love, I was going to say, your laugh is so contagious. Okay, here's, here's your homework assignment. I'm going to pray, but here's your homework assignment. That you pay attention when you're irritated and you say, help me, Jesus. Just, just that one thing. When, when you feel the irritation, he's, he wants, the Holy Spirit wants to take you a whole new sensitivity. See, something happened in my life where I, I recognized that I had been collecting irritations and they took me up down the wrong path. The Lord wants us to take care of, say, one grain, one grain of sand at a time. Notice the, the oyster does not collect ten irritations. Don't bother me. I'm fine. I'm doing good. No problem. Excellent. Oh, yeah? What I see isn't so excellent. You look a little strange right now. Oh, yeah. What's really on the inside showing on the outside, and you ain't so cool, and you ain't so clean. The reason for the Word of God, the Word of God washes you. And the blood of Jesus cleanses you. That's why forgiveness is so important. Reading the Word is so important. Because if you feel dirty, if you feel down, just read the Word of God. Just read a few of these scriptures. No good thing will God withhold. Psalm 84, 11. God, help me. Give more scriptures. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in Him. Oh, fear the Lord. There is no want to them that revere God. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Get those scriptures inside of you. And when you're irritated... Say, help me, Jesus. The Holy Spirit will pop up on the screen, and you'll start saying those scriptures. And you go from irritated to calm. And what is so cool is you become less and less and less irritated because more and more of God's love de is deposited inside of you when you use this prescription. It is so awesome. It's like almost unbelievable until you try it. All the irritations sanctified by rejoicing, thinking something good can come out of them. And they can. Because, see, we have a backer. We have a guarantor. We're in covenant with God. We have a manufacturer that will back up his promises. You just have to apply them, and boom, he comes in right behind you. Irritations are an opportunity. Irritations are actually a blessing if you respond correctly to when you're irritated now get this when Lisa's irritated at me no she couldn't be irritated at me okay when she's irritated with Danny <clears throat> that's even less possible when she's irritated at no that's less possible let's stick with me when she's irritated with me it's more possible with me <clears throat>
I can either respond with an irritation or I can respond in love. See, irritations are a virus that want to hop from one person to another. So when Ashley's irritated with Jordan and says something out of her irritated heart, Jordan has a choice to be irritated by her irritation and irritate her back. The Lord said to me a week ago, he says he wants everybody to get off the irritation seesaw. That was worth coming to church for. Stop blaming your irritations on other people. Apply the word of God. Become unirritable. Walk in a love that you never walked in. 1 Corinthians 13, I start off with, it says love, God's love, the nature of God. See, God is not irritated. So if you're irritated and you stay irritated, you're out of sync with his nature and you're out of sync with his wisdom. You're out of sync with the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit's there to say, hey, hey, Carol. Over here. Listen to what I'm saying. This is really good. You're irritated. This is really good. Something powerful can happen if you embrace it and you rejoice right now instead of blame your irritation on the frog that crossed the street. I mean, the things we justify our irritations. Come on, that, they're just about as that wild. And in God's eye, they're like, there's a frog crossing the street. You're irritated. Give me a break. You know, come on. You can live in a place of peace and joy. There is a way out of irritations, but only if you take the narrow road. Every, it's easy to take the wide road when you're irritated. That's easy. That doesn't take any skill. That doesn't take any faith. That doesn't take any dedication to God. That doesn't take any commitment. Anybody can be lazy and blame their irritated Father, you said that strongholds exist in our mind, evil imaginations, wrong thinking. I ask that they would be torn down with this message, totally transformed, and I know there's a whole lot more I could say, Father, but just trying to hit the point that irritations are actually an opportunity. Irritations are actually a grain of sand that if we release the lycra of rejoicing like you've asked us to do and mix faith with that irritation in, in your nature and just stop being controlled by fear and unbelief and doubt that we can come into a place of pearl likeness and we can display your glory everywhere we go if we embrace this little message right here Father I pray for that I pray for that supernatural transformation. I pray that when the irritation comes, that you give them an, I just release a new grace, that they have a new sensitivity, that when they're irritated, they go down the narrow path instead of the wide path. Instead of complaining, they rejoice. Instead of regent, resenting, they rejoice. They say, oh wow, this is an irritation. This is a cool thing. Something good is gonna happen because I'm gonna mix faith with it and I'm gonna rejoice. Instead of blame somebody else for it, and something powerful is going to happen. I'm going to be set free from all these irritations as I use the wisdom of God. This is awesome. I'm about to go to a whole new level of glory, new level of freedom, a new level of prosperity, a new level of joy, a new level of peace. This is so exciting. I pray for that to happen for all of us like we've never had that happen before as we hear your wisdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. <clears throat>